got finished tightening a couple belts on this Chevy truck with a 350 engine in it and I thought I would take the opportunity to show how the brackets are mounted and the belts are run on these 350s is pretty common through the late 70s into the 80s this is an 86 but they're largely the same I've went in the past to try to find this sort of information on the internet and every little bit of stuff I found pictures were just crappy and there were no help so the best thing for me was always to find one that actually had it together so that's what I'm going to show you so anyway this truck has three belts it's pretty common and we start over on the driver's side you have an air conditioning compressor this is the short version uh, I don't know what to call this R R4 or something like that but some of them have a long A6 it doesn't really matter and then below it you have the power steering pump and then you have the water pump and then over on the other side you have the alternator so usually we're going to look at the alternator but this is usually the most involved side right here trying to get the air conditioning compressor mounted up so let's just start here and look at what we got first thing you're going to notice is you come down here there's a bracket that is let me make sure i'm showing you the right one the bracket down here that comes off the back of this combination of the power steering pump and the air conditioning compressor and it mounts looks like to the exhaust manifold studs and then it comes up and this one comes up and then you have a bolt back here that comes off the air conditioning compressor we go down on the power steering pump it mounts on the front side of that bracket there's a captive nut that's welded on it has a bolt that goes to it, sorry for the finger. And all this camera in a weird place. And then on this truck, trying to show you that behind you. Down below there. Kind of hard to see in there. Try another angle, but back on the back here. This you should be able to see another nut on the back of that power steering pump in there I hope up in there somewhere there's another one not we already saw that one but back in there there it is you see how the bracket is inset towards the front of the vehicle but it's got a bolt and a nut on it right there and then this one has another bracket up here on this that is mounted Right down into the, where the front of the cylinder head is. It's got a bolt there, and it comes up. And it's also, I think, it bolts into the intake somewhere up there, possibly. It has a bracket up here. It goes to the intake. It's a support. And then there's a bolt. Bolts the front of the air conditioning compressor to that bracket, like so. And then you have down here, a couple things going on here you look down in there you have that's the bracket you're looking at the bracket there that's mounted onto the power steering pump and it's kind of hard to discern but there's a stud there in the front of the cylinder head and it has a stud that has a nut and then the bracket the power that black bracket and then another nut right there that's the pivot you have to loosen that anytime you tension the power steering pump. It has nothing to do with the water pump. So that's the way that's set up right there. And then down, I almost forgot it when I was trying to do this, but if you look straight down, let me get the light. There it is, I had it, there it is. Look down past the water pump. What's going on here? Look past the water pump, you'll see another bolt head right there between the, the water pump and the power steering belt that has, that's another pivot well it's not a pivot it's got a slot in that you can't see it but that bracket that's made on there that one big bracket's got a slot so that's another adjustment slot tightening slot whatever you want to call that so that's generally the way this is set up to do your power steering and your air conditioning and then you can see the routing of the belts let's come back around here clear about it this truck has this engine rather has 
a crank pulley with three belts on it. It has two V belts at the rear and then it has this flat rib belt for the alternator that's on the front and it goes around the water pump. Oh man, cramping my hand there. But the way it works is concerning the two V belts that go around the power steering pump, you have a long, one long belt on the middle slot or the front V belt slot, whichever you prefer. It comes around and it comes around the power steering pump and it comes up over the air conditioning compressor and goes back to the water pump and, and back down again. It's quite simple. And then you have the rear V belt, one you can see there on the power steering pulley. Uh, it just simply comes off the crank down there at the rear and goes just, all it does is go around the power steering pump and then goes back to the crankshaft. So you have, in essence, you have two belts that are running the power steering pump, but you have one that continues around to the air conditioning. And then the flat serpentine, it's not really a serpentine, like a rib belt, I guess you could say it is. That's just for the alternator. Now, this truck has another slot on the water pump because it used to have uh, an air pump, a small pump on it, which is no longer here but it did have that. That's probably where that was operated off of. So let's look at the alternator on this one. Pardon me, I'm gonna get my stool so I can actually look in there. So when we come up here, it's got a very simple standard arrangement for the, for the alternator. It has one big bracket on the top there. You see this a lot, which the bolt at the front down there goes to the water pump. Come on in, right there. So it bolts in right there. And then the rear bolt, come on back out. Comes, come around to the back back here. And the rear bolt to that bracket bolts on to the intake right in front of the thermostat housing. And then it's got this device, don't mind that. That's just something that was from the, the pollution control stuff. And of course, the alternator mounts there, and I don't know, there should be another pivot bolt over here, like they all have. And it's not the most simple thing to see, but there it is, right there. Right, right into the cylinder head, and this alternator looks like it has another bracket on it, I see right there. You see that bolt that's into the back of the alternator? So that is going to... I'm not sure. It's awful hard to see. It looks like it's bolted onto the alternator, possibly. But these are generally the same, no matter the age of them. But like I said, I've always went looking for this information. If you have a pile of parts here, you know, your engine's out and you're putting something together and uh, you need to have a reference. Hopefully this will help. There's no real easy way to, you know, do the filming of this. I hope it was clear enough for you. I'm surprised it. I did a video several years ago on another pickup truck about all the sending units on these engines, and I was shocked at how much of a use that's been to people. Seems like I was glad about that. I'm glad that helped folks. But anyway, if you have any questions, feel free to ask them, and I'll help you about that. But this will be kind of a general guide to what you're dealing with. If you're curious of what the truck is that we're looking at, this is an 86 Chevy uh, three-quarter ton C20 heavy duty with a 350 engine and a turbo 400 transmission. It's an oldie but a goodie. Okay, guys, thank you for watching and I uh, hope this helps. See you around.